So, you want to know about Tomb of Annihilation, but don't have time to read the book or never learn to read in the first place. Well, then let me explain it as quickly as I can. Spoilers, obviously. Introduction. A lich named Esrak found a dead body and decided it should be a god. To make it less dead, more god, he built the Soul Monger, a machine that absorbs the soul of everyone that dies on the planet and slowly unresurrects people from death, which is a lot of people in a world where adventurers try to fight dragons, often Triple unsuccessfully. Kill. The party is tasked with finding the Soul Monger and destroying it before it drains the life out of all the old adventurers that were one day from retirement. The Soul Monger is somewhere in Chult, a jungled peninsula with more undead and lava than you can shake a stick at, especially because sticks burn in lava. Chult is home to many types of creatures, including bird people, evil bird people, cat people, evil cat people, but the weaker version, evil frog people, evil snake people, dwarves, tourist giants, goblins that are absolutely stacked, and people. People. Also, it's really hot and rains all the time. Chapter 1, Port Nyanzuru. Remember how there's a death curse slowly killing a bunch of people, including the old wizard lady that just teleported the party here? Well, forget all of that, because this place has freaking dinosaur races. If the party wants to take a break from dinosaur races, they can become debt collectors, persuade a woman to take off her shirt, kill someone for a dying man, hunt pirates, and witness a man's state plot hooks before he collapses in the street. The party can also tour the city to take in the sites, such as a landfill, a temple with a gold hat, a market that is stained red with blood, bathhouses that might get those red stains out, a coliseum, a lighthouse, and possibly a public execution that includes ninja warrior plus dinosaurs. If that last one sounds gruesome, don't worry. Only those that commit heinous crimes are put in the dinosaur murder pit, like using the wrong type of dye or killing someone. Oh wait, that second one is legal under the right circumstances. Well, if the party wants to skip all of that, besides the dino racing, <laughs> of course, they can hire a guide to lead them into the jungle. The guide better be from the list of registered guides controlled by the guide monopoly, otherwise this adventure will end in the dino murder pit. Chapter 2, The Land of Cholt. Time for the party to look for the soulmonger, get lost, get dehydrated, get diseased, and get attacked by the undead. While stumbling through the jungle, the party can discover almost 50 unique locations, which includes, ahem, a basin full of lobsters, a canyon of bones, a long bridge that needs its inscription fingered properly, a volcanic canyon with newts, a bay with a dragon turtle that wants a destroyed camp with a statue to Steve Irwin and a dead man in a shithole, a diseased camp with a commander that orders the party around, a massive dairy-free volcanic milkshake, a village where the party can honeypot a frog king, a signal tower where terror folk let the bodies hit the floor, a fort where the party can participate in colonialism or watch sad horse jousting, a floating sacred rock housing a not-so-sacred lich that points the party towards adventure instead of killing them, ruins that no you want to can enter. A dwarven mine that got flooded by lava and has a fully functioning map on tabletop simulator. Why? A ship used by frost giants to sail here and search the jungle for a ring. A bunch of buildings renovated by water to be shark, hag, and paleosaur housing. A pirate cave built with a box of scraps and protected by eye patches. An Aarakocra temple in the mountains where characters can learn to fly with a flower and find a queen without a queendom. An inlet found after everyone knew it was there. A lake with volcanic vents and no fish. A land of ash and smoke and sometimes a dragon. And a ruined city made mostly of human skulls after a hag ate all the bodies the skulls were attached to. The hag will make a corpse into an undead if given a gemstone and a living person that becomes a corpse during the ritual. Risen Dead Corpse has a limited time warranty. Nanny Poo Poo is not liable for corpse decay after ritual completion. The party can also find the crater where a city teleported out but needs to teleport back in so a dude can see his GF again. A big cliff. A garden full of hallucinogenics tended by a Medusa that is really not coping with her trauma properly. A dragon skeleton. A sick nasty section of jungle with a palace that surfed on giant undead turtles. Chapter 3. A temple with a staircase that really wants you to climb it properly. An abandoned beach. A white sand beach that once had a city but it fell into the water. A bunch of rivers. A town that got Pompeii. A poisonous dairy free volcanic milkshake, a bay with cyclopses that didn't get to be a part of the name, a piece of geography that is less snout and more straight, valleys with dinosaurs and lizard folk, lava and ash, or fire newts, a shield guardian whose master died so, so badly, a ship that should not be in the deep jungle, a crashed airship that deserves being in the deep jungle with a starving crew that's just been in an idle animation for days, a dwarf mine containing Bob conquered by Tinder, and finally a village ready to catapult to safety surrounded by ants. <sighs> Did you get all that? I really would not want to repeat it. Chapter 3, Dwellers of the Forbidden City. Welcome to Omu, which many called Paradise. The slaves that lived here probably did not. Anyway, God left, some trickster gods tricked everyone into building shrines, a lich killed the tricksters and made everyone build a big tomb they all immediately used, a bunch of yuan died in an earthquake, and then the yuan got a new manager. You are now caught up on 200 years of history. The party will most likely show up here looking for that big lich tomb, but they can't open it until they collect a cube from all nine shrines to the trickster gods. While trying to collect those cubes, the party can meet Space Mold, make an alliance with wizards that will probably be broken almost immediately, find a decoy 
decoy cube, meet deranged cat people, turn into an animal, make shadows, give a door fake treasure, get paralyzed by a cube, and fight a teleporting T-Rex. If the party gets through all of that, the last cube they need is stolen by Yuanti, forcing the party to not totally skip Chapter 4. Chapter 4, Fane of the Night Serpent. Roz Nassin, a dude that raised an undead army and caused that undead army to become an invasive jungle species, became a snake, then became leader of the snakes, and now wants to end the world. Well, at least he would end the world, but right now he's taking some sick leave. To get the cube Raisin stole, the party can get embroiled in a coup they definitely won't be blamed for, soak in blood while other people are eaten alive to become Yuan-Ti pureblood for reasons, discover a harem that is no longer in use due to death rectile curse function, light bricks of literal nightmare fuel on fire, rub ointment on an old man with dry skin, ring the Hydra dinner bell, and find a guy that died in the back to become fungus. Or the party could just ask nicely for the cube and Raisin will give it to them. Chapter 5, Tomb of the Nine Gods. Wait, why isn't this chapter named Tomb of Annihilation? Disappointment! If the party wants to find the soulmonger and end the death curse, they'll need to enter this trap of Palooza, collect five skulls, get inhabited oh, by shit. trickster gods that are a lot Here less dead than the rest of the book implies, and reach the deepest level. While in the tomb, many spells don't work, like teleport and find traps, which is sad because this is the one time find traps has a use. As the party explores the tomb, they can miss a bunch of secret doors, get trapped in a chest more than once, read, lose all their armor and weapons to the power of magnets, drown in wine, get a lantern with a backstory, meet a genie with an itty bitty living space, and meet an architect that would like to know more about current affairs and world history. Deeper down, the party can jam iron spikes into every orifice they find to stop yet another trap from triggering, make their duplicate eat soup, encounter a statue that passes wind so violently it causes short-term madness, tumble dry themselves on low, get bored, and fight an invisible beholder. But wait, there's more. Even deeper down, the party can suck on bird bones, cut off their arm to open a door, fight a T-Rex after criticizing a blind man's art, anger the sun, get magic powers from Eserac to help defeat Eserac, blow themselves up, teleport to the trash room from Wally and restart the dungeon. But that's not all. If the party gets to the deepest portion of the dungeon, they can get slimed, fight five wardrobes, discover the speedrunner waterfall skip, meet an abolith with the personality of two anime characters, meet a hungry door that eats people that don't have crabs, have all of their equipment broken just in case they didn't hate this place already, and align the stars to teleport to Victorian era London. If the party gets through all of that, they can reach the level with the soulmonger. But first, they'll need to complete the trial of shapes, meet their clone, and starve instead of eating an obvious trap buffet. The party can then finally enter the phylactery Costco and meet the Death God, undoubtedly a towering presence that- Oh dear lord, it's disgusting! Kill it, kill it, kill it! Once that is dead and the soulmonger destroyed, the death curse is lifted, though all the dead people are very much still dead. Esrak then shows up for the post-credits true final boss fight. If defeated, he remakes himself far away and waits for the party members to die so he can fight their children instead. For completing this near insurmountable task, the party can take magic items from the tomb that crumpled to dust, find a dude in a body bag, get access to a library, and return to the wizard that sent them on this quest to begin with. Though she probably died like two weeks ago to the death curse, since the party wasted a bunch of time in the beginning of this adventure racing dinosaurs. 